I'm started. Okay, I've got to find it. Go to the um, Facebook page, not yeah. the event. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Jane's Walks on uh, North Adams. Uh, first of all, I want to say Happy May Day and support your essential workers, support your Amazon workers, support your Instacart workers, support your nurses, support your doctors, support everybody keeping us safe and distanced right now, especially when they're fighting for more PPE, when they're fighting for essential pay. You know, they're supporting us. Let's support them. Um, so this is different. Normally, um, Jane's walks are walking conversations. So we do this in small groups and uh, it's less of a tour pointing out interesting things along the way as a, you know, a walking conversation. So we um, are trying something new. So this is new, it's new for me, and I'm sure the world is new for all of you right now. I invite you, thank you for coming uh, to see this, and join me on this wonderful juxtaposition tour here in North Adams, the smallest city in Massachusetts. Um, if you found this live feed, you've also found our Facebook page. So I've also shared many, um, other events that other Jane's Walks organizers are doing around the world. Today, this weekend, um, this festival will be stretched out over the entire year. So I in invite you to join the live events that you can. I invite you, if you can't make it to the live events, then I think we're all recording uh, everything we're doing, so join it then. If you have a question, post it here on the live feed. Um, if you're listening to us live, someone I have, um, Kristen is behind me. She's monitoring the feed, so she'll be able to send any questions my way. If you have a question or a comment um, and it's not live, then send me a message. Leave a message on Facebook, however it is that you found me. We'll be monitoring this, so, you know, ask away. Um, so, what is a Jane's Walk? Um, I think I mentioned it before, but it's a, more of a walking conversation. It's based on the life of urbanist and activist um, Jane Jacobs, who was very active in the city, um, active in the 60s. Um, I believe we have a question. Yes. Ah, what is a juxtaposition? Yes, we'll get to that shortly. But first, so the question is, what is a just juxtaposition? Oh, I see it's been typed here, so I could see that too. Um, but first, let me explain to you about Jane and what a Jane's Walk is. So a Jane's Walk is a free citizen-led urban walking tour. And it doesn't have to be urban. It could be rural. We're kind of rural out here for a little city. Um, it doesn't have to be a walking tour. It can be anything you want it to be, especially now. Um, it can be it can be anything that opens up a conversation about your city. So the question here is, what is a juxtaposition? So to me, um, I have a definition that I posted on the event page, but to me, a ju juxtaposition is when you hold two opposing ideals or ideas and they're both true at the same time. So um, I come to this space. This is one of my favorite juxtaposition spaces that I call it here because it, uh, there are two things that we think about when we're out here. We're on um, the east side of a berm going along the Hoosick River here in North Adams. It's the South Branch and there are two berms, one on the east side, one on the west side. The one on the west side has um, some ball fields. But if you look at it, it's, uh, the river is running through it here. It's very peaceful. There are usual birds, there are fish, there's wildlife. When it's a little further along in the spring, these trees 
um, are butting out a bit more. And it's very, it feels, um, feels very peaceful. And then at the same time, what we have is if you turn around, an active scrapyard. So as you walk down this berm, you're holding these two ideals and two things that we need in our lives at the same time, right? We need this lovely wilderness and this is kind of one of the things we strive for, right? But at the same time, what's also true is this scrapyard, right? If we want refrigeration, if we want beds, if we want the stuff we have and when it wears out, we need new stuff, we need a place for it to go and be recycled. So often I chose to do this walk um, on a Friday in the afternoon because sometimes when I'm walking down here, at the same time you have, uh, you see the birds behind me on the berm? You have birds, you have the wildlife, sometimes you even have people fishing down there. At the same time, you have the scrapyard working at the same time. You have these big machines picking up large, I don't know, handfuls or claw fills, claw fills of scrap that's already been sorted. Some could be aluminum, some could be, I don't know, iron, steel. I don't, I don't know exactly how a scrap yard works, um, but I'm fascinated by them because everything, if you'd owned like a big bulky thing made of mud oil um, and you got rid of it, it would end up here, right? Um, so our cars, our refrigerators, our air conditioners, I don't know, a lot of our stuff, our old dining room tables, if they're made of metal, um, chairs, they would end up here behind me. So they would start here and then they'd start getting broken down. And it looks like, you know, a chaotic mess, but if you look close at everything, it's all very similar. So I don't know if they do it by weight. I don't know. I'm sure they can, I don't, I don't know how well you can just look at a metal and decide what it is. I think sometimes they do it by density. Uh, you see some of the machines just kind of clawing at the stuff and um, dropping it. And it seems like it's sorting it, right? So there are different layers of different weights of material. And then I think they take them and they put them in small blocks and they recycle them and send them to, I don't know, people who need them to make new things. So this is one of the many juxtapositions that I found in North Adams. So it's this active, um, usually active, but it's a bit of a rainy day today, uh, scrapyard that um, I don't know, I don't know if everybody like, like we want all the stuff, but not everybody wants a scrapyard. But that's a reality of the way we love our lives, right? So if we want stuff and we want to be able to get rid of stuff or we have to get rid of stuff, we need somebody to be able to take care of the stuff. And it's nice if we don't have to think about it, right? If we can put it out on the curb and somebody can take it away and we pretend like it's all gone, but it's not, right? It's here. And we need that but um, oh I hear it's hard to see the scrapyard in the background huh so let me go to a clearing and maybe I can turn my phone around and we can see it a little better uh, there we go so does that can you see that a little better can you see the heaps of things there and the machines so there's some there's some even bigger giant uh, piles of stuff back a little bit more but actually this is better so there are some piles and again you come across here's the berm man-made berm for uh, flood control and then here we have the river there we go. So juxtaposition. Stuff. 
river. And we need them both, right? Um, we have to be able to balance both these ideas at the same time. So I think that concept is very, I don't know, important, you know, we're really, we're quite divided right now. And uh, I think we have to learn how to hold uh, two opposing ideals at the same time. So maybe when we're stuck between these ideals and things that we have, maybe we don't want them, right? Maybe, maybe we don't want to think about the scrapyard all the time. It's necessary, but we don't want to think about it. Maybe we can think about it and we can try balancing it with the river, the stuff that we like, and we can just imagine ourselves walking along a beautiful grassy berm here in the uh, Berkshire Mountains on a kind of really nice day. This is kind of spring in uh, pre-spring in the Berkshires, right before we get to mud season and then the pollening, and then we get into real spring and then summer. But right now, you know, everything's kind of like vaguely muddy. Buds are just starting. It's overcast. It's actually gonna thunderstorm later. Um, but it's a day. It's a really nice day. And here's our walk. Um, so I do have a question. It says, what river is this? This is the Hoosick River. It, uh, this is the South Branch, the Hoosick River. It comes up from North, uh, South County. It flows up. Here we go, it flows north. And then when it gets to the next mountain range coming across here in North Adams, uh, it meets the North Branch of the Hoosick River, heads west, it goes up through Vermont, then through New York, and finally ends up in the uh, Hudson River. It was quite polluted at one time. I'm sure it probably still is very polluted. You can't, uh, if you eat the fish from it, you can't eat very much. I think the, uh, I believe this South Branch is a little more polluted than the North Branch, um, just because of the industries that they had on it at the time. Um, they were more electrical and uh, manufacturing later in life down there in the north branch we had uh mills uh and most of the mills were just using the river for power not for uh not as much dumping as much i'm sure it was used for some um so there lots of people use this uh east berm to walk on uh as you can see here we go we have some people walking over on the west berm you can walk this is uh, the west berm if you walk from howell field along the west berm you come to a little road you can cross over and be by one of the cemeteries and then walk along a rail rail uh, line only during the week because on the weekends the uh, sightseeing train runs but it's safe during the week you can walk along it there and you can walk down to it's my favorite way to walk safe favorite safest way to walk to Pedrin's for uh, a fish fry and a frosty and some onion rings. Um, we'll have some other juxtapositions tours later um, and maybe we'll show some some um, issues about making this a walkable city too. Uh, again this is walking along that west berm is one of my favorite ways to walk to Pedrins. It's also the safest. Uh, the other, the only other ways to walk from downtown out to Pedrins would be along Route 8, which is uh, very, very busy, very trafficy, or through um, Church Street. I think it's Church Street that goes out or um, I forget the name of the street. There's one more up. Anyway, they both go under train trestles and it's hard to walk under the train trestles safely. So if I want to walk out of town, whoops, I know I'm getting you very dizzy, panning very fast, but I walk along the west berm of this Hoosick River. I get to the end of that berm. It ends, oh, you can see the bridge down there. 
you take a left over that bridge and when you cross the bridge you'll see the cemetery to your right go to the cemetery and just follow that rail line until you get to the next road make a right go to the corner then you're at the corner of whatever road that is and route eight and you will find pedrins um have a fish fry have some onion rings have a frosty um maybe after some of the restrictions have lifted you can sit at one of the picnic tables which are closed right now but right now you can get it to go or sit in your car um, or take it from Pedrin's and walk back towards the cemetery and eat it there. Um, this is maybe a closer view of the piles of the scrapyard. So you see how they're different? This one in the foreground is dark and rusty. Back there, I don't know, steel, aluminum, something else. Next to it is like all these piles just seem, they have very similar things on them. So I don't know if it's by weight or by whatever. And sometimes you come here and you see these machines are just lifting and packing things into cubes. So um, I imagine that they're going to be using them for making new things. Um, so let me turn this around. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the second year of Jane's Walks North Adams. Um, COVID edition. Um, I hope you enjoy our virtual um, tour. Thank you for coming along. And really check out our Facebook page and check out all the other wonderful things other Jane's Walks city organizers are putting together in their cities. Um, you can go to London. You can go to New Haven and learn about pizza. Uh, Brazil, Peru. There's so many. I shared just such a small fraction of the ones that I found. Oh, oh in Toronto, please. They're having a huge conference. Uh, there are lots of discussions about public space and urbans, um, urban environments. So we have the chance to join a real global community. So um, bye. Thank you.